because we have a, a guy on the show. When I looked at the schedule for the week uh -huh. and I saw that this young man, artist, actor, was going to be on the show, I was really excited. Tremendously talented. Yes, exactly. We had to calm you down just a little bit. Just got a little man crush <sighs> on him. Daniel Radcliffe is who we're talking about. He's going to be on our show. And, you know, he's been winning our hearts over since he was 11 years old. I was not doing anything at 11, but getting on my parents' nerves. Anyway, we're going to fast forward 10 years later, and things really haven't changed that much. No, they haven't. Here is a look at the indelible mark this actor has made on both stage and screen. The boy wizard who captured our hearts as Harry Potter is all grown up and taken his very big talent to the Broadway stage. Oh, aren't you proud to be in that fraternity? Daniel Radcliffe is electrifying in his role as J. Pierpont Finch, singing and dancing his way up the corporate ladder in the revival of how to succeed in business without really trying. His range as a singer and a dancer is remarkable to both the audience and his Tony Award-winning co-star, John Larroquette. The fact that Mr. Radcliffe was in it was first and foremost. I thought for my first Broadway endeavor to have that kind of caliber of talent around me is you always try to get the best people you can. What was your dream about last night? I can't remember. What's yours about? Of course, this isn't the star's first go around on the Great White Way. In 2008, Daniel Radcliffe made his Broadway debut in the drama Equus, giving us a glimpse of his acting prowess passionately playing the tormented teenager Alan Strang. And as the door closes on Hogwarts, not only did a new one open on stage, but one opened again on screen in the highly anticipated supernatural thriller, The Woman in Black. There are those who believe the whole town is cursed. Daniel plays Arthur, a rather disenfranchised character whose grief puts him on the edge of madness. The Woman in Black. And we are so excited. Daniel Radcliffe is in our studio today to talk about Broadway and his new movie coming out, which looks pretty fascinating. Really Good to have you here. Thanks very much for having me. Just walked you with a smile. I love it. I love okay. your just your energy is just fantastic. Oh, Unlike this one over here. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Great. you know I, I was I was thinking about this. Audra knows I've been really excited about this interview yes. all week. Okay. This must be a really interesting time in your career mm -hmm. as one phase of your career ends and you really get to look out and go, okay, what do I want to do next? Yeah. What do I want to be next? I mean, it's for the next two years we are absolutely in, in transition and it's about finding as much diverse work inside that time as I possibly can and to make as much of an impression outside of Harry Potter and I think that's, and that can be achieved with people. I think people put a lot of pressure on the kind of, oh, they're only going to be seen as this forever. And, but I don't think it, that's necessarily the case now because I think that in the, if you look at big franchises from particularly the 70s, like Star Wars is the example people often mm -hmm. bring up. People didn't have the same relationship with actors in those days. Actors were less celebrities than they are now and right. more right. the actors. And there was less of the you know, interviews like this or gossip magazines or whatever. That, so people don't feel a connection to... Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think people now see me as a person more they than see they Daniel do. Radcliffe, I, I not certainly, a character. I certainly get yeah. Daniel more than I get Harry. I mean, generally speaking, or maybe people are just being kind and choosing to shout my <laughs> way away. And, and even with the Star Wars template, you know, yeah, sure, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, that was her forever, but Harrison Ford but, you know, has had this amazing, diverse career. Exactly, and it's, it's so that there, is, there is no rule book in terms of how this stuff is done. Well, you're doing um, it right, though. It looks but, like I mean, things are working I think, out, you know? I think it's, but I think that's the thing. I, I think you can, you can become too obsessed with kind of trying to get like a master plan of mm -hmm. how I will break away from something. Or, I think you ultimately just have to be having a good time and enjoying yourself, because otherwise it's really not worth it. And, yeah, and trying to do stuff that is... Maybe not what people expect. Like, right. I, I certainly didn't expect to be doing a musical three years ago, so I doubt anyone else <laughs> saw me going that way. Speaking of the musical, can we talk about this for a second? Yeah, and, you know, how many shows a week is it? Like, uh, eight, 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 shows, eight a shows a week. Eight shows a week. Non stop energy. Is it yeah. more uh, taxing on you physically or mentally, or is it equal? Well, it's interesting. With a show like this, that it's a physical thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a physical show, just in the amount of running around I do. And at the beginning of the week, I feel fine and rejuvenated, and by the end, my <laughs> shins are hurting. And, like, it's all creeping going around. To part but um, but with Equus, when I did Equus here, my other time on stage, was that was a mental thing. I've now done this show for a lot longer than I did Equus on either run individually. 
And I'm still really excited to come to work every day. Whereas by the end of five months of Equus, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, it seems like that would be turn. very emotionally it, draining. It was yeah? kind of a little draining, and and you know, and getting naked on stage is, is I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it's, it's no not fun. fun. Yeah. It's, people say it when it's like I talked to somebody who said, oh, I found it really liberating, and you were like, yeah, you did hair. That is that's all about liberation. I was running around blinding horses for ten minutes. Yeah, like, just it was, tell it like it is. Um, but. Um, but yeah, so no, I mean, I'm having a, an amazing time. It is, it is tiring. It is, it, it is the hardest I have ever worked. At, but mm -hmm. I, I love it. You know, and I'm, that, I know it's that's a great what I thought. When I left the show, I thought, first of all, I didn't expect you to be able to sing and dance as well like as you can. That oh, just wasn't how I thought of you. You were no, great not up at all, there. Would you? But you were also. It was a rainy Tuesday night, and you were up there performing like it was opening night. Oh, like, good. I felt like you were sweating and having a great time. And by the time we finished, I was like, man. That guy loves to perform. Oh, well, good. No, I mean, I do. I get a kick out, and it's also, I get a huge kick out of the, the, of the people I get to perform with. You know, John Marraquette and yeah. Michael You Park guys had something going on mm -hmm. the yeah, night I saw. Like, there was something well, yeah. going on. There is always, there's always, like, John, John, particularly at the moment, is, is calling me different names. He's called, there's one point in the show where he goes, whoa, and he'll say either insert Charlie Brown right. or yeah. he's normally been doing like kids TV characters and then last night he went you he said whoa there you Jimbo which is a Kurosawa samurai film and I don't know if he knew that I knew the film or we talked about it or something but it really got me and I just started expect. laughing so there's always stuff that like he'll throw in that that it that that occasionally kind of makes it keeps a it hit fresh. Hot. Yeah, yeah. It keeps Speaking it fresh. of John, though, he gave you some high praise. He said that you're the reason why he wanted to be involved in this project. How Which does is very that kind. Feel it, that? It's it's lovely, and John is somebody I have a, a huge amount of respect for as a person and as a performer. I have never seen somebody who can. He finds jokes in the most unexpected places and does stuff that in any other hand. He, I think, John Larroquette has a real gift, which is that it's the same thing in a weird way that Pee Wee Herman has, which is that I'll be <laughs> sitting there watching, going, I don't know why I'm laughing at this, but it's really, really funny. <laughs> and just, there right. isn't the kind of un there's something uncontrolled and anarchic about John, which is really exciting to be around. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I'm having a great time with him and all our cast. We're, we're very, very lucky. There's no ego. Everyone's very chilled out, and it's a really nice place that. to go to work every day. Will you? You? We could talk to you forever. Seriously, we will you stay for, for a little bit? We want to talk about yeah, you. Yeah, we oh, please, I would love to talk about okay, that. Okay, yes, that's a good deal. So we have a lot more to talk about with Daniel Radcliffe. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with Daniel Radcliffe. Before the break, we had a lot of fun talking with you, so we're just going to continue on. Got a lot more questions for you. We've got a good one here. Too. Yeah, you've got well, you've got a new film coming out. This is yes. the first sort of non-Harry Potter film mm -hmm. since yeah. the franchise ended. It's called The Woman in Black. Tell us, number one, how did you get involved in this, and how did you pick it as your first script that you were going to do? I read the script um, about. I started reading the script on a plane about two hours after I'd done my last shot on Potter. Um, I did the last. We finished filming. Cried. Um, got on a plane, I was coming out to LA, I've ne I'd never been to, I think I'd been to LA, I've now spent a total of about 10 days in LA in my entire life. Probably plenty. And, uh, this was, <laughs> this <was> probably <laughs> plenty. But, uh, and I went back there for my, sec for my first ever like, round of doing meetings, yeah. and so that was the time, so I, I, was, I read the script on the plane, had a meeting with the director um, out in LA, and because I thought, it, despite the fact that he was English, he then flew out and we met over there yeah. and really, really liked each other, and um, he was actually one of the reasons I was so excited to become involved because it's only his second film, The Woman in Black, he directed a, and directed and wrote a terrifying film called Eden Lake, which is like a, a horror movie meets social realism. It's very, very scary yeah. and, um, and brilliant. And so I wanted to work with him because he was this exciting young director. And it was written by Jane Goldman, who wrote Stardust and, and Kick-Ass and, and The Debt, which has just come out. And, so, and it was a great, beautifully written script. And the part was very different in that I'm playing a father and there's, there's challenges to it, but it's, it's not a part that's going to make people go, oh, well, now he's just trying to freak us out by doing something so different yeah. that he's try just trying to get us not to think of him like that. Right. It's not like, it's, 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 and the story is so compelling that I think people will kind of forget that they're watching me or watching me transition. Or, and th those people won't be thinking about that because right. you're going to be just concentrating on not... Um, Having an accident. Well, and it seems like yeah. good story and good characters have got to be at the core of whatever. Exactly. You do. Yeah, totally. Are you I mean, that's all I look. Picky for. and selective about the, the roles that you take. I think or? I I pretty much think that if you if you're fortunate to be in a position financially where you can, as yeah. I am, have been lucky to, uh, you know, I was obviously Potter. You know, I mm -hmm. got paid Did pretty very well. well. Yeah. That, you know, and, and so I'm now in a position where I can pick and choose. And I think yeah. if you've got a 
if you're in that position, you sort of have a duty to because there's otherwise why would you, why would you do something for the money? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. at, at this at this and point, there's, there's no reason you for that. Keep and your... you know, yeah, absolutely. And it's important to me that I I kind of am selective and I don't want to do just just anything. And um, mm -hmm. but it's but it's also you know part of the, the there's two things that can get me very very excited about a job. One of which is the script and the characters, and the other is working with really really exciting people. Yeah. And and that's the thing. And I knew that they were thinking about Kieran Hines for another one, and who I'd worked with a little bit on Potter. And so I, I was, I was just very excited about this. It was a chance to do both those things. Get yeah, great material, it, it was like it was, it was just perfect, and it was a, it was a, a, very, very happy. I think we shot for twelve weeks in total, and it was like a great shoot, and everyone was cool. And all my friends had uh, just, it was just after Potter had finished, so. Or suddenly everyone went on to other films, and ours was by far the happiest. Like everyone was going on to like really, really hard, like War Horse. That was a hard dark film to work grim, on. Yeah. And like we were like we we're having a really doing a dark film, but having a great time. Yeah. So it That's was fun. Great. So you talk about the importance of, of choosing who you work with and choosing the material. Who would you love to work with? Is there anybody that you look out there and you go, boy, I'd like to do a film with that person, director, writer, doesn't matter. Actor. I mean, the Cohen brothers are kind of my, you know, what I grew up. Thinking of as some of my favourite films, some of my favourite modern films mm -hmm. have been Coen Brothers. Um, so I mean, guys like that. Uh, I think, um, I think in terms of British directors, you know, Christopher Nolan does some kind of amazing oh, yeah. stuff. I yeah. loved Inception. People, uh, you know, went either way oh, on that I film. Loved I, I film. loved it. I thought it was just to make a film for that to make a. To, to get a studio movie that was that ambitious in terms of storytelling and stuff, I just thought was really, really there impressive. There are people still trying yes. to figure out Inception, people that yeah. spent like a year ago, they're like, no, wait a minute, no, let me see. No, wait a minute, did back. this spin the that, thing? That and thing, I... was it going to fall? <laughs> I, uh, what, what, what was my favourite? I saw Inception three times when it was in the cinema, and the last time I saw it, it cut to the, the, the totem was um, spinning, spinning and the then it cut to the credits and somebody in front of me just went, oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought, I was like, if, I'm sure if, Chris, I was like, if Chris Nolan heard that, he'd be thrilled, he'd be I'm happy. sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You put it out there, so that's a good thing. Put it out there first on our show, and we're so yeah, glad hey, that you, you joined know, us. If you've got any, if you've got any you got never know. going, guys. You never, never know. I might be, I'll hopefully be available <laughs> after, after, after January 1st. <laughs> <laughs> date, specific date. Yeah. Good luck with the rest of your run. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Take care, we must meet.